Hi, my name's Robert and I'm here to tell you about a game called Beehive. Uh, Beehive is a fun, simple two to four player game. It'll take about 45 minutes to play. It's basically a blind bidding area control game about bees. I'm going to tell you how to make the game and I'm going to show you how to play it. So what is Beehive about? Well, as a player, you're going to have control over a small little army of bees, and all your bees are carrying different amounts of nectar. The board represents a hive, and on each turn of the game, different areas of the hive will be available for you to fly your bees to. Players who bring back the most nectar to each area of the hive will be able to make honey there. And over the course of the game, the honey that you produce will score you points. And if you can collect kind of clusters of honey, or basically areas that are next to other areas, you're going to massively increase the amount of points you get. However, there's other things that will happen during the game where players can swap honey markers around, or if you're the losing player, you can remove other players' honey markers from the board, which hopefully makes for a fun, simple, tactical, area control blind bidding game. So, how do you make the copy of the game? Well, all the files you need and the rules for the game and a rules crib sheet can be found on Board Game Geek. You need to make the board 26 hexes, numbered 1 to 24 and 2 which are blank. Feel free to try different designs of the board if you wish. You need a deck of cards, you'll need 28 cards, these will be numbered 1 to 24 and 4 special cards. You'll also need some bees for each player. These are just tokens which look the same from one side but on the underside will have a number on. You can use tiddlywinks, poker chips, piece of card. You'll also need some coloured markers for each player. These are called the honey markers. These basically just little markers to show ownership of an area that match the colour of that player's bees. You also may want to have five bidding markers. These just need to look different from all the other markers and they're used to show which areas of the board can be bid on on any turn. So how do you set up the game? Well, first of all, you set up the board as shown in the rules. We recommend you play this version of the game first, but if you play the game a few times, you might want to experiment with different boards. You then need to give each player some bees. You made five bees for each player. However, you're only going to start with four. Each player needs a zero, a two, a three, and a four. One of your zeros, or drone bees, are returned to the box for now. You give each player all their honey markers, which there's place in front of them, and then you take the beekeeper deck, shuffle it up, and you're ready to begin. The game is going to be played over six simple phases. The first phase of any turn is called the beekeeper phase. Dead easy. You take the beekeeper deck, you shuffle it up, you deal off the top five cards. Most of these are going to have numbers on which correspond to areas of the hive. So you just take one of your bidding markers and put it on that area of the hive to show that it's available for bidding this turn. If there's any of the four special cards come up, then you place a bidding marker on those to show that they are also available for bidding on. And that's the beekeeper phase. The next phase is the flying phase. In the first turn, You'll have a start player decided by whatever means the players decide. However, in subsequent turns, whichever player is the losing player, and I shall talk about that later, will decide who places the first bid or flies their bee into the hive. The player who goes first secretly chooses one of their bees and places it face down on an area of the hive or a special card. That player knows how much nectar they have placed in that area. Other players do not know this information. The next player clockwise then decides to place one of their bees on an area of the hive or special card. You can place your bees in areas that have other bees in. You can place bees in areas that you've already flown bees into. When you do so, you place bees on top of the other bees. So it clearly forms a stack on the board and it makes it clear who threw their bee in there first. When every player has finished placing all the bees they have available, that's the end of the flying phase. The next phase is making honey. This is where we work out who controls which area. What you do is you pick an area of the hive, you look at the bees that were flown into that area and how much nectar they were carrying. The player who bought the most nectar to an area gains control of that area and they take one of their honey markers and place it on that area of the hive. If there was a tie for nectar, 
Well, the player who flew there first gains control. You may have a situation where two players flew in two drone bees. Now, they weren't carrying nectar, their value was zero. However, the player who got there first is still deemed to claim ownership of that area of the hive and they can produce honey there. The same applies to the special cards. The player with the most nectar points on them gets control of that card and takes hold of it for later on. If a player wins the card that says extra drone bee, they win an extra drone bee. They will take their extra drone bee from the supply and that player has five bees at their disposal. No extra nectar, just an extra chip to mislead other players with. The extra drone bee card is then shuffled back into the beekeeper deck. There's an exception to this. Once all players have won their extra drone bee, then that card is discarded from the game. An extra drone bee can still be bid on by players, even if they already have an extra drone bee. However, you can never win more than one. The next card I'm going to explain is Swarming. There are two Swarming cards. One says Swarming 1 and the other says Swarming 2. They both do exactly the same thing, but if there was an event where both cards came up, Swarming 1 takes place before Swarming 2. A player who wins the Swarming card picks two areas on the board that already have honey markers in them and swaps ownership of those two areas. They must belong to different players. They don't have to belong to the player who's doing the swarming, but, as I say, they must belong to different players. Players now score points for their honey markers. You're going to score points for having your honey markers in groups. The larger your groups, the more points you get, and each group that you have on the board will score you points. If you've got one honey marker on its own, that's only worth one measly honey point. However, if you've got two in adjacent areas of the hive, that will score you one plus two, three points. If you've got three in a group, that's going to score you one plus two plus three, six points. And this continues in this triangular number system fashion. So a group of five honey markers will score a player one plus two plus three plus four plus five, 15 points. And this grows and grows and grows. If you don't want to have to work out triangular numbers every time you're scoring, well, an aid is in the rules and on the crib sheets for the players. The last phase in a round of beehive is called the honey removal phase. This is where the beekeeper comes along and takes honey out of the hive. At this point we have to work out who is the losing player. First of all, we just look at who's got the least points. Whoever's got the least points is the losing player. If that is a tie, then we look at how many honey markers each player has on the board. The player with the least honey markers is considered the losing player. The losing player has a very, very special power. They can remove one of the honey markers from the board. When they do this, they just take the token off the hive, they find the corresponding card from the discard pile and return it to the deck. And that's the end of a round of beehive. You're then ready to start again from the beekeeper phase. The game ends when you deal out your five cards of the beekeeper phase and there'll be less than five cards left in the deck. When that happens, you're on the last round of the game, and at the end of the game, the player with the most honey points wins. So I say thank you for taking time to watch the video and hopefully making and playing your own copy of the game. My first attempt at putting a game online that I've made, so please send any feedback to me on Board Game Geek. My username there is Ertikins, E-R-T-I-K-I-N-S, or you can send me a message on Twitter where I have the username of Starplayer. Thanks so much for watching the video and hope you enjoy the game.